Welcome scholars. This video is about limiting reactants, which is an important concept in chemical reactions. And if we take a look at the reaction above that's written here as an example, we see that nitrogen gas, a molecule of nitrogen gas could react with three molecules of hydrogen gas to form two molecules of ammonia gas. And that overall ratio from that balanced reaction, that tells us how much of each of those reactants we would need to make those molecules of ammonia. Notice that when we're speaking in terms of molecules, we can only refer to integer numbers of molecules. You can't have a fraction of a molecule, or however you could have a fraction of a mole. And so even though right now we've been trying to balance with integers, We've been doing so because we want to be able to read reactions in terms of either molecules or moles. And for us to read it in terms of molecules, we need the whole numbers. So if we try and illustrate this reaction, and we have a reaction container, a vessel, which contains some of these gases. And I've drawn in here some nitrogen and some hydrogen. Without telling you too much about the diagram, could you figure out which molecules are which? And you should be able to say that the nitrogen molecules are the larger ones because their electrons are in a higher shell number and so they would be larger atoms in general, so the molecules would also be larger. And in fact, nitrogen molecules have or nitrogen atoms have a, an atomic radius of about 150 picometers, which is almost twice that of hydrogen, which has an atomic radius of 74 picometers. You could also take those dimensions and find the volumes of the atoms, and the volume of the nitrogen atom is more than twice the volume of the hydrogen atom. That A with the circle, that's known as an angstrom, and that is 10 to the negative 10th meters. So if we take a look at this illustration and we think about what our balanced reaction shows us, our balanced reaction shows us that for every nitrogen molecule, we would need three hydrogen molecules for this reaction to happen. So how many times does this reaction happen in the illustration shown? Well, there's only three hydrogen molecules in the illustration. So that means this reaction can only happen once. And if this reaction only happens once, then only three molecules of hydrogen react, only one reaction happens, only two molecules of ammonia are formed, and only one molecule of nitrogen is actually created. Now, if we look at these illustrations and we try to write down what we see here, we see six nitrogen molecules and we see three hydrogen molecules. After the reaction, we see two ammonia molecules and we still see five nitrogen molecules. And so this description, unfortunately, is not really a reaction because we're not actually showing what was changed. We're just describing what was there before and after. But if you look at this, what we've written down, and we do think about the yield zero as being an equality, what do we see that's exactly the same on both sides? Well, you see that there are five nitrogen gases, five nitrogen molecules on the right side, and there's more than five on the left. So the five nitrogen molecules on the right, on the product side, will cancel out with five of the nitrogen molecules on the left, and notice that that gives us our overall reaction. When you cancel out things that appear on both sides of the reaction, there could be multiple reasons why they're there. They could be um, a catalyst, they could be excess reactant, 
They could be a product that's also a reactant. There's any number of reasons why you might have multiple things that are the same on both sides of a reaction. In this case, it's because the hydrogen was something called a limiting reactant. When we look at this reaction that actually happens in that drawing, we see that all of the hydrogen reacted. There's no hydrogen left. after the reaction. And what this helps us see is that unless all of the reactants are consumed, then there is always, at least and usually only, one limiting reactant, which limits how much product can form. Unless you've got a perfect mixture where you've got a perfect proportion between everything that can react so that everything is consumed at exactly the same time, then there will always be one reactant in particular that runs out first, that's consumed first. And that reactant that runs out first is known as the limiting reactant because it limits how much product can form. If we look back at the top in our diagram, do we have any more hydrogen molecules that can react with our nitrogen molecules? No. So even though we've got lots of nitrogen, we don't, don't have enough hydrogen for more of that nitrogen to react. The amount of product that the limiting reactant can form is known as the theoretical yield. This is the maximum amount of product that can be made from a given mixture because there's no more of the other reactants that are necessary if they've already run out. If you change the amounts in the mixture, then you change the theoretical yield. So in our first example, hydrogen was the limiting reactant. In this example, what have we done with our numbers of molecules? Well, we've gotten rid of a few nitrogens, only one, I think. There's still one, two, three, four, five nitrogens, but now there's one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. So we've got a lot more hydrogen. We've got less nitrogen. Does that mean that nitrogen is now the limiting reactant? No, because the ratio is still three to one for the reaction. So if all of this nitrogen was gonna react, we would need 15 molecules of hydrogen, but we only have six. So because we only have six molecules of hydrogen, the hydrogen is still the limiting reactant. Now, as drawn with six molecules, this reaction could happen twice. If this reaction can happen twice, then we would expect to see four ammonia molecules. If this reaction happens twice, then we would expect two nitrogens to react. And if we started with five, then we have three nitrogens left. The four molecules of ammonia is now the theoretical yield, just as before in the original mixture, the two molecules of ammonia was the theoretical yield when the reaction only happened once. So do we usually use molecules? No, we use mass instead or some other measurable quantity that would also allow us to calculate moles. So, again, looking at this reaction, instead of counting molecules, if we now use moles and we get to moles by using mass, then in the laboratory, we could measure the grams of nitrogen and the grams of hydrogen. And a question could be, given 20 grams of nitrogen and 10 grams of hydrogen, what is the theoretical yield of ammonia? And to point out here, the preferred method that I like to use to solve questions like this also allows you to determine the limiting reactant. And you could see questions like that that ask, what is the limiting reactant? But with the straightforward method I'm gonna show you, 
you can determine this answer. You can determine both answers, the theoretical yield and the limiting reactant at the same time. So of course, to solve any kind of stoichiometry question, you always need a balanced chemical equation. Well, we've already got that. And to solve this, what we want to do is we want to take each reactant and we want to convert the grams of each reactant to grams of a product. In this case, there's only one product and it's specified in the question, which is ammonia. If there was more than one product and it was not specified which one you were looking for the theoretical yield of, or you were trying to determine the limiting reactant using this method, you would just pick the same product to convert everything to. So our 20 grams of nitrogen, we convert to moles of nitrogen. We convert from moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia. And we convert from moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. Notice that a theoretical yield will always be expressed as a mass. of product. You might be allowed to use a shortcut in some cases where it might say what is the theoretical yield in moles of the product, but otherwise whenever you're looking for a theoretical yield you should always think about going to grams. This is one of the reasons why we did so many gram-gram conversions before spring break. We will also want to convert using the hydrogen. So we take our grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, change from moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia, and moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. So now, this is interesting information. You've just done a big conversion for both reactants in this mixture. Notice that we had 20 grams of nitrogen and 10 grams of hydrogen. And the question is asking for the theoretical yield. And I also said we could use this information to determine the limiting reactant. So what does this information really tell you? What does this 24.3 grams of ammonia tell you about the nitrogen? What does this 56.2 grams of ammonia tell you about the hydrogen? Well, this means that we have enough nitrogen to make 24.3 grams of ammonia we have enough hydrogen to make 56.2 grams of ammonia. Do we have enough hydrogen to make 24.3 grams of ammonia? Absolutely. If we can make more here from the hydrogen, then we could certainly make less with this hydrogen if we had to. But do we have enough nitrogen to make 56 grams of ammonia? No, we only have enough nitrogen to make 24 grams of ammonia, which is less than 56. So when you've converted here at this point to your products, your least amount of product is limited by the limiting reactant. And the least amount of product that you could form, if you can't, if you, we don't have enough hydrogen to, if we don't have enough nitrogen rather to form more than this, even though we have enough hydrogen to form more than twice this amount, the smallest amount here then is also the theoretical yield. So these are linked. The limiting reactant determines the theoretical yield. You can determine which reactant is limiting by looking at the masses of product that can be formed, and the reactant that forms the smallest amount of product is the limiting reactant, and the smallest amount of product is the theoretical yield.